This video is about a COVID necklace ionizer study. In the study, the scientists used an ionizer necklace to prevent viral transmission between two hamsters. And it worked! Ions are basically invisible UVC. Both UVC bulbs and air ionizers use electricity generated from an outlet or battery. Both consumer products simply put this electricity into the air. UVC uses photons. Ionizers use electrons with photons. It's just electricity in the air killing these virus particles. So in the study, without the ionizer turned on, 100% of the hamsters became infected with COVID. The way they did the study is they intentionally infected a hamster with COVID. We put that hamster in the first cage on the left. And then five centimeters apart, they had another hamster that was healthy that did not have COVID. They wanted to confirm aerosol transmission. And they did confirm this. The hamster on the left got the hamster on the right sick with COVID. In the next part of the experiment, the scientists turned on the ionizer between the two animals and it protected the second hamster from getting a COVID infection from the first hamster. The ions emitted from the ionizer simply killed the virus particles. In the study, they also performed additional tests. They tested the ionizer and saw there was no detectable ozone emissions. They also exposed animals to negative ions for four weeks and it showed that their lungs were perfectly healthy after four weeks. In addition, they took this necklace ionizer and they saw that it actually reduced total particles in the room in real time. This study also used the ionizer to disinfect the face mask. A mannequin wearing a mask was exposed to viral aerosols for 10 minutes. As shown in the chart above, negative ions significantly reduced the amount of viral nucleic acid stuck on the mask. The disinfection efficiencies were 99% and 98% for COVID at the distance of 30 centimeters and 50 centimeters respectively. So the ionizer killed the COVID virons inside the mask itself. Ions effective distance. So when you wear an ionizer necklace, depending on how you wear it, it could be 15 centimeters away from your face or your mouth, I would say. Um, it could be you know 20 centimeters away from your face mouth uh and the study they tested it with a face mask as far as 50 centimeters and it still worked in my opinion you should try to wear it you know as close as you can to your mouth where you're comfortable it's always important to be comfortable um i have personally noticed if i wear it a little bit farther away it doesn't help with my allergies as much and it's very clear in fact like it's not something i debate in my own head so something I'd try to wear, you know, a little higher up on the chest. Ionizers protect the eyes and the ears. So um, there are a few studies that show that you can get infected from COVID through your eyes. Your eye secretions also are capable of emitting uh, COVID virons. So if you had an ionizer, you would be protecting your eyes and your ears, where a mask would only be protecting your mouth and your nose. Um, the eardrums allow up to 200 nanometer particles in. You can actually get infected th of COVID through your ears. It's not documented or anything, but from everything I read and understand, I'm kind of surprised it's not more spoken about. It's probably not that common, I would imagine, but it's certainly possible. Mask and ionizers. So if you're not wearing a mask, you're inhaling billions of particles, mold, pollen, bacteria, viruses every single day. When you wear a surgical mask, it does a reasonably good job at blocking many particles. It's not perfect, the seal is not perfect, but a surgical mask is still helpful. An N95 mask is more helpful, the seal is tight, and you're better off at blocking many particles. The issue is, N95 mask don't stop pollen activities. A pollen grain can emit pollen spores for you to inhale. Mold can grow and it can, you can inhale mold through an N95 mask. And dust, VOC dust particulates can emit VOX gases into your lungs for you to inhale. If you wear an ionizer with a surgical mask or an N95 mask, it kills the VOC particles. It kills the mold. It stops pollen from having activities. So it's very powerful to wear an ionizer with a mask. You don't even need to wear it with a mask. That's your choice. But if you believe in N95 masks, you should really believe in ionizers. 
So this study used the ionizer model E-Mask AKT002. Uh, I actually purchased this ionizer. I actually been trying to purchase it for some time. I couldn't find anyone that was selling it. So as soon as I saw it, I picked it up. Um, in the study, they measured the device to have 106,000 ions at 30 centimeters uh, distance. Um, I myself got very different numbers. Uh, I was surprised how awful this device was. It's not a very good ionizer. So I, this device worked really well in the study and you can get an ionizer for 20 bucks that even works better. So here are some casual ionizer measurements. I'm doing these on the fly. These are casual. Please don't take them literally. I'm just doing them back to back just to show you what's going on. So this is a Vinci M5. You can see maybe around 700,000 ions per centimeter cube, um, maybe a little bit less. Just give me an idea at 30 centimeters. So that's a Vinci M5. Now we're gonna do the ion ion neo at about 30 centimeters. We're gonna see what's going on here. Maybe 750,000 um, ions per centimeter cube. Now we're gonna use the E mask ionizers. This is what they use in the study. This is the ionizer they use between animals. Let's see what we got here. All right, and um, get a little focus here. You can see 30,000, 100,000 ions per centimeter cubed. It's not a good ionizer. I, I've measured this a million times. I'm really surprised how random the numbers are. It's not a well-designed device, to be honest with you. Uh, this is the uh, Air Tamer 320. It's a $200 device. Um, it's a uh, very expensive for the amount of ions it gives you. So we're gonna look here real quick. We're gonna see, was it 600,000 ions per centimeter cubed at 30 centimeters? It's 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 a good device, but it's extremely expensive. I just not something I would recommend. Uh, this is a Vinci W5. Uh, I actually really like this device. It's very awkward shape. Um, you can see it's very low numbers. We're talking about 130,000 ions per centimeter cube, meaning I probably need to clean the emitter or something. So when the emitter is not clean, you'll get lower ions. So it did pick up a little bit higher ions um, as I went through. And this is um, uh, Air Vita um, M1. I like this mini ionizer. It's, it's very overpriced, but it's one of the very few ionizers that have an attachment so you can actually use it at, a, at the desk and you don't have to actually wear it. Um, so yeah, that was just quick measurements of these devices. Ion density is not the only way we measure ions. Here I'm using an electric field meter to measure the electric field emitted from the ionizers. So you can see from the Neo, Ion Neo, it's, it's a very high electric field. You can see from the E-Mask, very low electric field, getting nothing because it's a weak ionizer. Now, I really like this example here, Air Tamer 320. So I just got to fiddle with it, turn it on. Do you see how the electric field just bounces? It goes up and down. That's the ion emission. That tells you how the ions are being emitted. So here's a Vinci W5, their newer model. You can see it's a pretty good electrical field. We'll turn it off. We're going to see the Vinci M5, the older model. And we can see here, the electrical field bounces a lot, similar to the Air, Air Tamer 320. Now we're gonna see the Air Vita M1, and you can see the same thing, the electrical field bounces up and down. These are consumer meters where I'm trying to show you something that's you know very difficult to show you. You would need a, you know, a lab, but there are many ways to measure an ion. It's not just the density. We have strength of ions as well. Many devices theories are required for ionizer measurements. So these are a bunch of consumer monitors I have to try to measure the ions. Um, my favorite is really the wattage meter for room ionizers, because if you know how much electricity is being used, you have an idea of how strong those ions are. But it does change based on how many emitters you have. The point is, um, Failed beyond belief, PhD aerosol scientists and medical doctors can't tell you the difference in plasma discharge between these devices. You see, the $12 ionizer has more ions than the $220 ionizer. Yet, the $220 ionizer, despite having less ions, is a thousand times better. And that's because this is physics. This is not chemistry as some people try to claim for some bizarre reason. Plasma discharge is a very in-depth topic and we have to use a variety of devices to know how good, you know, these ionizers are. 
So an ion density is important, but we need to know the electric field, the electrostatic field, uh, ozone emissions, and there's other ways of measuring the discharge. Um, I'm just really surprised how arrogant some people are on this topic when they know less than nothing. So here's a COVID cough example while wearing an ionizer with no mask. Someone coughs COVID virons into your face, the ionizer will kill the COVID virons and knock them to the floor. Just want to show this as an example. Fomites are objects or materials which are likely to carry infection, such as clothes. Virus particles don't just land on your face. Your face takes up 3.5% surface area of your entire body. If you're in a public place, very few virons are going to go through to your mask. Most virons that land on your body will land everywhere else but your face. And this is really important because yes, we inhale the virons, that's how we get sick, but when a virus particle is on your arm or your chest, it can become re airlized at a moment's notice. And this is a problem when you're not at the public place anymore. You're at home wearing the same clothes but not wearing the mask. Fomites aerosol viral transmission. So this was proven in a study. They put flu virus particles inside of a paper towel. They rubbed the paper towel and they saw that the virus particles were released and they were able to get animals sick with the flu. So a virus particle can land on the surface and then it can re-enter the air to be inhaled. So I wanna stress again, this was already proven. Nobody debates this, it's just not very well known. Fomite viral transmission. So let's say you're in public wearing a mask. Uh, your mask blocks COVID virons. They will land everywhere on your body. When you go home, you take off the mask and you're still wearing the same clothes, still have the same arms. Um, those virons on your body can become re aerolized easily. So an, a virus particle on your arm can re enter the air and become inhalable. A virus particle in the mask can leave the mask through ambient air reactions alone and you can re inhale it. That's why it's important to kill virus particles, not just block them. COVID shirt fomite example. Let's say someone with COVID coughs in your face because that person's a jerk and those COVID virons land on your body. The mask blocks the COVID virons from the mask, but you still have COVID virons on your shirt that you have to be concerned about. Inhaling aerolized fomites. So let's say you get in your car after the incident, you take off your mask. Those virus particles are still on your clothes. As you're driving, moving, or doing anything at all, you can be lying down. Those virus particles can become re aerolized for you to inhale and to get COVID. I guarantee you this is far more common than people realize. COVID fomites with an ionizer. An ionizer will absolutely help with COVID virus particles on your clothes. It's not just deactivating virus particles in your mask. It's also killing virus particles above and around the emitter. Infants and ionizers. So we all know that a child, a young child can't wear a mask and they need protection from COVID. So here is a photo of my nephew and he's getting COVID because he doesn't have an ionizer. He's also very annoying. I don't want to get into that. Um, when he wears an ionizer, he doesn't get COVID. He's still annoying. Now, either, if some people are uncomfortable for a child to wear an ionizer, you can just attach it nearby and it will absolutely help the child not get COVID. Now, if it's my nephew, he's always going to be annoying no matter what scenario you choose. Please let me know if you have any questions. Different types of ionizers, safety, and additional information can be found at ionizerions.com.